Welcome back, everybody. This is part two of our Pivot Table Basics series. Again, we will be using Google Sheets spreadsheets. However, for the most part, this should work pretty much the same in Microsoft Excel pivot tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick review. Here we have our data. It's completely made up data. We have in column A, our sales territory, and we have our years, our items sold, revenue, expenses, and profit. So to create a pivot table from this data, make sure you don't have any blank rows or blank columns or spaces or anything like that. So all you have to do is select a cell of your data or you can select all your data like this but you don't have to. Go up to data, go down to pivot table and click. Okay so here we have our blank pivot table. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the report editor. We're going to go to the rows, click on the add field. Let's go ahead and add our sales territory. Next, let's go to our columns, click on the add field. Let's go ahead and choose the years. And then for our values, we're gonna click on the add field and let's choose profit. Okay, so you can see here we have a quick summary of our profit separated by the sales territories here and the years here. Now one of the first things you might wanna do is see who the top sales territories are. So let's sort that by our grand total here. Let's go over to our rows section here. We want to sort descending and then sort by, click on this drop down, sum of profit, and then choose grand total. Okay, so we can see that the top three, and this is just review from part one, we can see that the top three sales territories are US, China, and Japan. Okay, so now let's go over a few more of the cool things you can do with pivot tables. One of the first things to know is that you can take these grand totals off. If you don't want to see them, just simply check these show totals boxes, and then they will be taken out of your pivot table. If the grand totals are not showing and you'd like to see them, just simply check these show totals boxes. Another thing that you can do with pivot tables is you can add calculated fields. So if you want to add a special field that may not already be in your data, you wanna to go to your values section and then click on add field, then go down here to calculated field. Okay, so here we have a blank section for our calculated field. And in order to populate that field, we wanna go over here, back over to our values. You'll see the calculated field box here Let's go ahead and rename this. And let's just say that we wanna see the average profit per item sold. So let's give it the name, average profit per item sold. Okay, and then you need to put in your formula. We're gonna go ahead and put in our formula and we're gonna get back an answer. And the answer that we'll get back is probably not something you would ever see in your data. And that's just because of the way I set the data up when I created it. So let's go ahead and put in our formula. And what we're going to do is we're gonna divide profit by items sold. So type in profit. That's the header name of our data over here. Let's go back over to our data. You can see it's profit here, and then we're gonna divide that by the item sold here. So here we have equals profit divided by, and we need to put this item sold into a single quote string, okay? So we put single quote, items sold single quote. And now we have our average profit per item sold. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that calculated field. Another thing to note is if you ever want to summarize your values data with a different measure, just go to your value section here, go to summarize by, and then choose the different type of measure you would like to use. So for example, you could use count, you could use average, median, and so on. Next, let's say that you wanted to add more values to your pivot table. In order to do that, just go to your values section, click on the add field, and in this case, let's go ahead and add items sold. Okay, so now we can see, along with our profit numbers, we also have our items sold numbers. And if this is a little bit hard to view, you can always go over here to the values section and change this as from columns to rows. So now we have our sales territory, and then we have the profit and items sold for each of those sales territory displayed in a slightly different way. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of the items sold. Another cool thing you can do is you can filter this pivot table. 
So in order to do that, just go to your filter section, click on add field, and let's say we want to filter this for one of the sales territories. So we clicked on the sales territory, now we click on the drop down for the show. Let's go ahead and clear all these. And let's choose United Kingdom. Click OK. And now you have your pivot table filtered for one sales territory. So let's get rid of that. And let's add another filter. Let's say this time we want to filter for a certain year. So we clicked on the year. Let's click on the show drop down. Let's clear all these and let's filter for 2014. And if you wanted to, you could filter with different combinations. Okay. But let's just choose 2014. Click OK. And now we have it filtered by the year. Okay, so let's get rid of our filter. Now let's go over a few different ways that you could visualize this data very quickly. So one really cool thing you can do is you can actually add a little trend line inside of a cell next to your data. And these are called spark lines. So in order to use a spark line, we're just going to click on a cell in an empty column next to our pivot table. We're gonna type out equals, and then we're gonna type out spark line. We're gonna choose the spark line, and we're gonna choose our data. So we've chosen the data for the US in this case. And if you just hit enter, you'll see a spark line or a trend line for the years 2012 through 2015 for the US. Now if we want to see the spark lines or trend lines for all the sales territories, we'll just go ahead and drag that down. Let's add a little bit of formatting. And now you can see the trend line for each sales territory. So for example, you can see the US, the trend line has gone down. For China, the trend line has gone up. For Japan, the, the trend line went up a little bit, and then it kind of flattened out. For Australia, you can see a pretty steady trend line upwards, and so on. Now, if you'd like to make these just a little bit bigger and easier to see, just go ahead and select your data. We'll make these cells a little bit bigger. Okay, and that allows you to see your spark lines or trend lines just a little bit better. Okay, so that's one quick way you can visualize some trending data using your pivot table summary. Another thing you can do is you can insert a chart. So in this case, we're just going to select a cell of our pivot table. Then we want to go up to our toolbar here, and we're going to click on Insert Chart. And for this example, let's go ahead and choose this chart right here. And then we're going to click Insert. And now you have a quick little summary chart of your pivot table data. Okay, so I think that just about covers the basics for how to get started using pivot tables in Google Sheets. We will be doing many more spreadsheet tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.